Up the night, joining me now, MSNBC contributor Josh Barrow, correspondent with The Upshot, The New York Times, Jess McIntosh, spokesperson for Emily's List, the pro-choice organization supporting women running for elected office, which has endorsed Hillary Clinton. There's a lot of things to sort through in watching this. Um, so, sure so is. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, 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 because I think there's a mixture for people, um, for people watching this who are not Trump supporters, uh, particularly for pe people who are watching this who are considered themselves liberal, center left Democrats. There's this very, there's this intense mix of Schadenfreude, right? Like mm -hmm. delight at watching Roger Ailes get out bullied by some, out Roger Ailed by someone else. It's almost obscene how much you're enjoying yourself. Chris. <laughs> I am not. I've never I, seen no, you I am, this happen. No, I'm just covering this. Uh -huh, I'm covering uh -huh, this because yeah. I'm. This is an no. no I mean, your papers. <laughs> there, there is there is something about you know it, if you spend a lot of time. If you spend a lot of time interacting with the modern American, uh, there's this kind of, uh, you know, real core of just kind of um, seething anger, anger, and kind of <laughs> bullying, and this sort of obsession with who's dominating who. Yeah. And we're sort of detached from, well, I think marginal tax rates should be but lower, and we're just seeing it. I think the reason why Trump is ripping the Republican Party apart at the seams. And he is doing that. Let's just be clear. He is doing that. He, I mean, everything from the actual establishment to the agitator Fox News establishment, I think what's happening is that Donald Trump doesn't actually believe anything that he says. He is creating a persona that mirrors yes. what will work for the Republican base. Mm -hmm. And that is so much more frightening than just having right. someone who believes these racist I things. He only says them because it will work for because the Because he knows what the audience yes. wants to hear. And, and he understands the Republican base better than the Republican Party does, which yes. is why this has worked so well. This is why, because yes. he walked in and this distance, this social distance, this enormous social distance had grown up between Republican elites yeah. and their base. You and I were just having a Twitter conversation with someone who staffs a Republican senator right. talking about things like occupational licensing and breaking up the car dealership monopoly yeah. as populist issues that will get the base revved up. That would be the alternative to the Donald Trump agenda. That's right. Here's the, you know, populism and we're going to change occupational licensing rules. And I think the Sounds thing is compelling. that uh, liberals think of Republicans in Washington sort of cynically playing on cultural grievances of their vast base out in the country in order to implement their economic agenda. But I think it's really not so much that cynicism as often unawareness that that's what the model is. I think that these I people 100 percent agree. Genuinely they think believe that, that if, yeah. They think the people at that rally could be persuaded that the thing that's really getting grinding their gears is occupational licensing. Exactly. <laughs> and, and, that the, and that they are deeply concerned about tax rates on capital gains right. and all these things that the Republican right. donor class cares about. It's not just that there was this divergence between the elites and the base and the parties, that the elites didn't even know that the divergence existed mm -hmm. to the extent that it and, and now he's taken on, I mean, taking on Fox is the ultimate, right? I mean, it's one thing to take on the donor class, which is, yeah. first of all, diffuse. Sure. They don't, in the old uh, saying, buy ink by the barrel, right? They, they, they don't have their own platform. Here's, I mean, here he is, he's, he's tweeting, uh, he's retweeting today this, like, conspiracy theory about the, the, the Saudi prince <laughs> who, is a, who is a part owner of Fox News or, or, or has an ownership right. stake, right? Yeah, it's like 6%, <coughs> 6 20th century Fox. Of, of 20th something. century Fox, right? So they're, they're not a controlling chair in any way. Right. This ridiculous and obviously photoshopped photo. Most people don't know the co-owner of Fox News is Prince Al Walid of Saudi Arabia. Here with his sister and his and his host Megan, misspelled Kelly. Oh, no. <laughs> In case you only watch Fox News, you miss everywhere else. Google it. It's like that is like, but <laughs> that is okay. So he actually has a reason to be afraid of Megan Kelly, and and the the reason why his his rise and the fall of the Republican Party delights me as a Democrat. Um, is because it is not tenable in the general election. The question that Megyn Kelly asked him last time that got him in such uh, a, a state, a tizzy, if you yes. will, um, was how he would react to his past comments calling women bimbos and fat pigs and slobs and dogs and all the rest of it. Okay, so Emily's List Sister Org, American Women, polled with Elle magazine today. We polled women asking, even if you agreed with a candidate 100% on their policies, would you vote for somebody who had used those exact words about women? 73% of Republican women said no, not a chance. Yeah, but, but he's going to get way more than 27% of Republican women to vote for him. But that, like, but that he's, is... In the primary, he's going to get more than 27%. Well, but, but against the Democrat, he'd get way more. Than flaw. Like, obvious. Well, but here's the, here's, here's the question, and here's something I think it's important as we watch this sort of unfold tonight. We are, of course, looking at the uh, the Trump plane. Uh, we have a live shot of the Trump plane. Uh, <laughs> the, 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 that... Don't lose sight of the fact that we are talking about, again, we're talking about Iowa. I'm sure we're talking about vastly underrepresented, 
non-representative states right. with small, hardcore people mm -hmm. that are not representative of the broader electorate, right? right? We're, we are talking about, like, you know, 40% of one half of one half of a party is, right. is, is the group we're talking about. And keep in mind, right now, Donald Trump is a massively toxically unpopular figure broadly, according to the polling. Favorable rating, favorability rating negative 25 points. Among, his favorable rating among Hispanics and African Americans, 18%. Present saying they would be embarrassed for Trump to be president, 50%. So as it stands now, and I know what you're going to say, Josh, but just keep in <laughs> mind right now, right now, right. this is a massively toxic figure. Right. And Donald Trump's right now, numbers, I'm right. Donald, right now, <laughs> maybe, but Donald Trump's numbers with Republicans were terrible before right. Donald and Trump is, got in the Republican that's race. Right. They, were, they looked like that. Right. Donald Trump is a very talented brander who is good at changing the perception of him, at, a, at changing the way voters think about him. He's gotten Republicans to forgive him for so many things. This is a guy who was avidly pro-choice. There's an They're ad running, running an in ad Iowa. in Iowa, right. which is dominated by evangelicals, of him saying, I'm very pro-choice over and over again. Yeah, and it doesn't seem to matter. Donald Trump used to be for a 13% wealth tax. <laughs> like, it's his old but issue this, positions right. are a litany. But, okay, but this yeah. gets back to this key point, right? right? That the issues aren't what's driving the... He was also for amnesty. No, no, I know that, but I'm saying the issues aren't what is driving who he's playing to now. Right, right. But when he expands out right. past that, people... It, but it's not just Republicans who can different. be appealed to on, I agree. like, I agree. nebulous so you, feeling you stuff. that Republicans would be forgiving him for as much as they are if Ted Cruz weren't as odious as Ted Cruz is? Well, the, the voter base doesn't necessarily think Ted Cruz is that odious. He polls very... His favorable right. ratings are very strong. It's the people, it's the people in the establishment right. who actually <laughs> despise him. Yeah. Um, all right, Josh Barrow and Jess McIntosh.